And now I move to the slides. Oh, I should say uh, share screen. Because I forgot that one week. The first week I forgot to share the screen. Um, okay. So. And then the next thing we do is target questions, right? I quoted you in my question. Okay. So target questions. Wait, how do we prepare for these? Like, is beautiful. Well, it's okay. So it's not a bad day. World's in crisis. Uh, what are we going to do? Okay. Um, what do we need to get out of this next two hours to do justice to the pain, suffering, sacrifice, time, everything? Uh, you know, everyone's here. We better get something out of this. It's the right attitude. What do you want to get out of it? Well, as usual, can you please be a little clearer about what's expected from the sketch writing? Right? Who's with me? Yeah. And while we're at it, let's just add in the analysis. Because uh, we got grades yesterday, and I'm a little pissed off. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Can you clarify a little bit what is expected of us for the analysis? I mean, uh, at what point am I going to start getting uh, an acceptable grade? Okay? And then let's do that first. And then focus on the well, let's do analysis first and then we'll go to the sketch writing that will be an entree into the lecture how about that yeah. okay so let's get back in touch with our frustration over the analysis you know and by the way how is this supposed to be helping me right that's a fair question okay what what do we need answers about the analysis When you post the assignment post, because I know you post like the link to the YouTube video, mm -hmm. can you also post the PDF that you sent in so that we can look at how he does his, his citations and everything? Can you? So what, the YouTube? Or Will or, oh. or, or any other person. Will can. Allen. So you want to see an example of the analysis? In a citation. Yeah, just like a PDF version. So there's no citation in there? No. Oh. oh my God. How long has he been teaching this course? Let's look. Or at least I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's, you're probably right. I'm sure you're right. I apologize. But uh, let's, let's just fix it. Let's just check. And while, while I'm doing that, what are your other questions slash demands? That's it. Um, clarification on some of my feedback. Okay, that's a good one. Let's see. So the next one is this one. So if we're going to fix it. 
Okay, it's in the sketch writing assignment that we're interested. You don't need this other stuff. Oh, you're right. I apologize. So excited about the sketch writing, I get carried away. What's this going to show us? Oh, there's the YouTube. Okay. Advertisement in an educational setting. I'm not sure if that's okay. I can. That is not okay. So here's the example. Here's the caption. And here's the key to the caption. Here's the now the argument. Here's the key to the argument. And there's the footnote. There's the citation. So, um, there's an ex there's an example of what the footnote should look like. Notice it's first name, last name, title of the chapter book. So it's all commas and it's first and last time. Now let's see if he did it right. What do we expect in, to see in the image source in the caption? The same way no. or bibliography format? Is that right? Bibliography format? Should be bibliography format in here? What should it be? Note citation form. Is that, that wasn't clear? So the caption, the citation, for the image. Yeah. And then the bibliography is for citations in the No, article. no. Bibliography format is for the bibliography, which will be something you do at some point. You haven't done it. And we want to make sure you know how to do that. And so we make that part of the analysis assignment. Right? So yes, you're going to use the bibliography format. Trust me. The bibliography is an alphabetized <laughs> list of the materials you look at. And that's the, that's the secret to remembering it. It's an alphabetized list. It goes A, B, C, D, and it doesn't, it's not alphabetized according to the author's first name. That would be wrong. That would be just wrong, right? So bibliography is a thing that goes at the end you're going to, it's going to show up in your form slides at some point when we start uh, getting deeper into the form process. So yes, that's important, but not yet. This in captions and in footnote citations, we use the note citation format, which behaves more like a sentence. It has commas separating the individual items. And it ends with a period. So you would denote citation image and then the footnote as well. Yeah. And then the only time is in the bibliography format is when you're going to itemize and list of that. The alphabetized list. Yeah. yeah. So that's the thing. Moment of silence. Is that good? Is that okay? Hi, good. Little question. Okay. When we were going into the adding information into the one, two, three, four, five, yeah. 
is that what is expected to be put into the bibliography right now? Or are you saying that it is just the image in the two versions that you can source that? Your use of the word bibliography in that question throws me off. It shows that I don't know. Okay. Then, then you're doing us all a favor by asking this question, and I'm we're grateful to you. The bibliography. This is an edited volume, and some publishers say uh, we're not going to include the bibliography. This is an authored book, and they have a bibliography. It starts on page 431. It's over 30 pages of an alphabetized list of sources used. Last name first, first name last, period. Title, bibliography, alphabetized list at the end of the book. So that's. The so last name, yeah. Last name first, first name last. And where are we going to encounter that? We will encounter that when we get deeper into the slideshow stuff. Look at that. Look at that. Son of a gun. Look at that. Bibliography. Boom. Right? Because when we do the forum, increasingly what the forum will be is a dress rehearsal for the kind of collective decision-making meetings that will be a significant mode of professional practice, engagement in your careers, where um, you're sitting down with the team and you're developing a set of principles to propose to the larger group. And so you, you sit around a table and you hash it out. You identify the issue, you articulate the principle, you back it up using visual evidence. And then you say, here are some key questions that every community needs to work through in order to figure out, solve their own thing. This is work remaining done with engaging the community. And here's some, here's some resources can help you go deeper if, if that becomes a useful thing to do. So you offer your clients, your audience, your, your partners, your collaborators, uh, this sources in the form of the bibliography. So yes, the bibliography will be a very important thing. Does that help? But back here in analysis land, Note citation for the image that's just right under the caption. The image source. Yeah. Uh, note citation as like an inserted footnote. So it's note site. We use note citation form format for the image source in the caption. We use note citation form format for the footnote citation. And then, what if I don't have a lot of the information for the? image source. That's the art of this, is uh, the standards of our discipline and our profession are, and generally standards of all of this, is you give the information that is knowable, not what you know, but what is knowable. Uh, you don't have to fly to Washington and go into the Library of Congress to find these things out. Just, you know, take a few minutes, do a search, see what you can find out. If, you, if it's possible to 
to discover this information, then that's great. Thank you very much. If it's if it's just not that accessible, then you leave it out. For example, uh, we don't often know who the photographer is. And so we just leave that information out and we just start with any identifiable label um, offered. This happens to be from Wikimedia Commons, which does an excellent job of supplying high resolution images with full information. Uh, are the, the standards of note citation are you give the date of publication. So we're all looking at the same version. Often, uh, because of this thing, the internet, that believe it or not is newish, because of the internet, we don't have a date of publication. There is, uh, there's no trace of when it hit the internet and what version this is that we're looking at. So instead of uh, giving, instead of making up the date of publication, which there is no date of publication for most internet resources, we just say, I looked at it on March 3rd, 2020. So that's when you give the access date is when no publish, publish publication date is no. Does that make sense? Okay, citation. Other questions about the analysis? You gave me this comment with the feedback and uh, I don't know, what is that supposed to mean? That's a good question. What comment did I give? Um, it was about the sort of on the same topic as uh, note citation in uh, image source bibliography. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess I used the wrong format for it. You were, you were using. So I used the image source or something? Yeah. I use the image source for my note citation. No, that's fine. No, what are the words that I said? You are using big, big, that's a word. Yeah. That's why your buddy said No, you said it. Okay. Again. Yeah, I can't. You said I was using that format for my note citation. You're using your bibliography, you're using bibliography format. Yeah. Instead of note citation, yeah, you should be using your note citation, yeah. Instead of um, well, because I was looking at it, it's so similar. It's so it's, similar. So what? Was so what's the big deal? Why are you making such a big deal of this? Well, the information is all there. It's just we. It's it's like ironing your shirt and showing up on time and. Being respectful of others. The norms and standards of the profession are that for the alphabetizing list at the end, your last name first, first name last, so you can alphabetize it. And for these things in the text, the image source and the footnote citation, you don't do that format. Oh, that would just be wrong. Sounds ridiculous. This is this is preparation for success in the profession. It's just expected that we use uh, note citation format, first name, last name, comma, title, comma, other information, comma, period, at the end. We use that format for this one and that. But how do you feel now? Still, because like, maybe if you like showed us the difference between them? Well, that's why we do uh, the thing. That's why we do the exercise in Brightspace when you submit um, your takeaway, your bibliography, and your note citation. Yeah. So 
maybe it'd be useful if we looked at yours. So you just submitted one last night. Yeah. All right. Can we look at it? Yeah. Laura. I just was curious about the submission for the schedule summary and also submitted the two citation formats and two reasons. Is that all that goes underneath by rubric grade? Um <sighs> Short answer is yes, because I'm looking at, so you and someone uh, worked out a section. I'm giving both of you the same grade. I'm assuming you both did uh, a fair amount of work or you negotiated it. And so I'm trying to stay out of that, right? Business, that's you guys. Um, and so I'm looking at that piece of sketch writing and I'm uh, giving you feedback using the rubric and the comments on how well you achieved the goals of this task. Does that answer the question? Maybe it'll help to look at Alex's. Yeah, see, I think um, I just submitted that. Oh, look and at that. And so you submitted this. Yeah. And then and I also did text. you put in the comment. Where do I, how do I reach the comment? It's back in here. There we go. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. I can deal with that. I mean, we're all, we're all figuring out. The so I'm, I'm evaluating it in two pieces. I'm evaluating the group work that you and your partner did. And that's, uh, that's one part. And I'm also looking at this. And I wish I could have control of my computer to enlarge. There we go. Thank you, computer. And in the comments, um, what, I'm, what I expect here is a takeaway sentence, uh, bibliography format for the reading, note citation format for the reading, and some target questions for the lecture. Okay. So what do we have here? The takeaway and the question. So this is the takeaway? That one and yeah, not right under. So I'm reading your takeaway. Yeah. And this is your takeaway. The expectation is this is your takeaway for the entire chapter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Well done, I assume. And it's your takeaway. This is at, um, someone asked me to clarify it. Alex, the other Alex, one of the other Alexes asked me to clarify. It. Uh, Right? Is it you? Um, someone asked me to clarify what should the takeaway be? And I said, I repeated what it said in the assignment. I said, this is a time capsule message between your present self to your future self. And you're writing to your future self saying, remember this. If you if you don't, if you if you only remember one thing. But your experience with this reading, you should remember this one thing. It might come in handy in the future. Right? So Southern California and the rest of the world, it was great to read and observe. Oh, you're reporting this is Dear Diary. It was really a great experience. I had a coffee and it was really upsetting in this place and it was a lovely day. And was, I really thought this was a good experience. That's not. Your future self is saying, why are you telling me this? I don't need to know this. Right? Your future self is saying, I need to know what is going on back in the turn of the century of the influence of American culture on other places in the world. That's what I need to know. Don't give me this. It was a great read. I don't care if it was good or not. Just tell me something useful. Um, 
different location. So now we're back into the content. Sorry for my tantrum about that short segment. Different locations begin to be inspired by different aspects of architecture. Starting to hint at something. Right? It's interesting. Oh, so no personal. Yeah. Okay. Say that. Yeah, I thought it was more of like a. It's not a. What we thought. Here's how I'm feeling. I think that's what. No, there's what's at stake here is remember the moment of truth. Every head in the room is going to turn to you, and you're either going to say something like that, and wow, that was good. Give him the promotion, right? Or not. And so, what we need is something that gets at, you know, something more specific. Los Angeles around the turn of the century was inspired Los Angeles images of Los Angeles and its architecture inspired uh, other locations to copy to mimic if you use that word now. so that's used that's what your future self will appreciate your current self often. so you're not looking for any eye statements but you do you are looking for an intended statement uh it's really um it, the per, well i i try to focus this back on the purpose uh if the most important thing for you to remember in the future is something about you personally then it might be nice but that's unlikely it's probably something like what I'm trying to push, like content, it's like content. Los Angeles had a profound influence on how the other parts of the world uh, designed for future reality. But that's that's the kind of thing I would expect to be useful to the future of It's interesting the way we normally see designs differs greatly for different groups of people and reading is one method to better comprehend the dynamics that drive architectural design. Uh, I would expect to say, you know, our experience of American cultural uh, values as embedded in our architecture can be totally different in translation to other settings, right? Isn't the future of Alex Brown, isn't that what he needs to know? So give him what he needs. This is, um, you know, you basically, you're creating the tools that your future self will pull out and use uh, in a pinch. It's like when James Bond goes to see M, you know, can I use this analogy? Is this a useful analogy? M is the acquisitions officer. He's always giving him a watch that explodes or something. No, forget this analogy, just back out now. It's not working. Okay, it's like a caddy and a golfer. Is that, is that okay? Caddy says, I recommend the seven iron. That one working better? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'm getting to know my audience, <laughs> right? So you're the caddy and the seven iron is the sentence, except the shot that you're, that your future self is going to take is way off in the distance. And the seven iron has to be constructed now so that you can take that winning shot out of the rough under the green key to the cup. Some of the point in the future, right? Is that making sense? So, so now the next thing I'm looking for are the bibliography, note citation, and target questions for the lecture. Am I going to find those? In the thing. Oh, in the PDF? Yeah. Because notice I'm ignoring everything. I, I don't know what. You're writing a lot of stuff here. I don't care. I don't tend to read that. Yeah. Why do you want me to read that? Do you want me to read that? What is it? What I thought was. <laughs> I think the bottom is these questions for lecture. Oh. I wrote, I quoted you. Okay. <laughs> Can social classes and people of social classes ever really become one? 
or will there always be a divide in the way people live from middle class to rich class? Does it need to be broad? Because that, that's broad, obviously. Well, this is a good target question for this lecture. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, well, I want it to be broad. Yeah, yeah but um, for target questions, I think broad is okay. Right? I didn't know if you wanted to just be like a one answer thing or more of like the everyone has an opinion. Everyone has an opinion is kind of the world we live in. You know, that's the work of the profession is navigating, negotiating, and despite the fact that everyone increasingly has the right to defend their own version of reality, which makes it harder and harder for us to do our jobs, we still have to do our jobs. And so we better get good at these really tough questions, especially in cases where no one in the room is ever going to agree. How do you come to a share a, a, a collective decision? Because that's the challenge of the profession. It used to be we would pretend that we could all come to the same position and agree and then act. But increasingly, that you know, that 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 seems increasingly unrealistic. And so, is it possible to hold on? feverishly to our disagreements and still act. This is kind of a life and death question for your generation. So let's figure that out. And so the world will turn to you or some small part of the world will turn to you because you have the tricks and the methods to actually make collective decision-making possible despite the fact that Everyone is totally committed to disagreeing with each other. Good luck. Okay, what should we look at next? Oh, we're going to look at the, the thing. Yeah. Bibli Bibliography. You could practice that at home. But it's a hard, you know, graffiti. You, we usually construct it from the back. Graffiti, ography, bibliography, bibliography. It is a graffiti, bibliography. Now I'm going to have trouble saying it. <laughs> okay. That's what I thought was the notes. Did he get it? How, how did he do, Jim? Yes, yes, yes. This goes after this after year. The West? After Orange County, Java, the, the chapter title. And the chapter title um, needs to have a comma. So it should be this. The green is things you did right. Oh, wait. I co author. Although the only contribution he did was the word tapio, which I don't think is the right word. That was his contribution. So, Eric goes here. At least he didn't insist on being first off. So, it's your name. Robert and Coward and Kong. Eric J. Nicola. No, because the authors of the chapter, the name of the chapter, and then um, in small i, in the name of the book. Orange County in the world, no colon. Edited by, or according to the guide guidance offered in said he, Eric J. Hickela and Rafael Pizarro, Westport, Connecticut, colon, period colon, 
I don't mean to sound, could you just rewrite it? I'm trying to kind of see what could. So, um, so what's this? So that's the, the bib. That's the bibliography format. I hate spending so much time on this, but uh, this is okay to spend time on this. That's not what I want. First change is, um, oh wait, this is wrong. Like that should be a period. Okay, uh, up on the bibliography format, it's a period. Orange County Java, blah, 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 comma. And it's more like a sentence, so it's a small i. And this is where I start to get pissed off at these standards is they're so arbitrary. Okay. Believe it or not, that is what's expected of us. Yes. And I met him somewhere when I was living in Java and uh, he said, he learned what I was working on. He said, I was supposed to write a chapter about this for this book, uh, but you should write it. I'll just be your co op. Because most of the work that Eric and Raphael did was already done before the day I met them. They, they uh, had a conference, they invited authors, the authors presented, and then they wrote letters to the authors, uh, and maybe it was email because it was 1998. And had email. People read them, it's so old. Um, so they arranged for the book. They, found a publisher, they did all this work, they read people's chapters and they said, can you change this? So they're doing a huge amount of work, they're the editors. And then at the very end of this process, they found some young punk kid working on the project that they needed help with. And they asked him, who had a chapter? And so I did. So I'm not the editor. It was someone dropped into the project at the very end of the process. Okay. So, uh, any other questions about this? This is fascinating to me because for 17 years I refused to talk about this. I've always said, look it up. Who's uh, responsible for knowing this? Don't ask me to do it. Just do it. That was me. Yeah, yeah. 
doesn't go away. The object is talked about it, so it's a huge rod. It's kind of got on the back of the Yeah. The line of the ceiling ends in deviation for the longer the word you know, yeah. So if you're not writing the whole word, you put it down. I'm just going to end. And CT, that's a zip code. Yeah, if you're from Switzerland, you didn't have CT. So you don't put CT, you put C or C or N. Because it's not N. And then colon. It's custody. You put the place of publication, then the company the publishing. And then comma. That's just the way someone set it up back in the 19th century. There is talk. You know, people go to work each day, believe it or not, and they sit in conference rooms and they say, okay, let's bring up the question again. Do we need place names? We come on Chicago, we have meetings about whether or not we get rid of this in edition 18 of Chicago New York Sky. So let's figure it out. So next semester, if, if Division 18 comes out and they say don't do this, I'll have to change this and the next year will be doing a different job. That's the crazy world we live in. And that's one of the reasons why I hate teaching this. It's just a convention. I think third grade, the teacher get into uh, the history of the plural form of box. If you have three of them, what, what is that? Oxen. Why is it oxen? Why is it oxes? Right? Did the teacher go into that? The teacher just said, just, it's oxen. I will punish you if you write oxes. Okay? That's how I am. That's how I want to be. I don't want to go into I don't know, right? It's so wrong. Why can't it be like Spanish? It's so wrong. Okay. Other questions? Hopefully, more substantive questions. Uh, I think we're still in the category. You gave me this grade, and then you uh, gave me this comment. And, ah, what does that mean? You know, that kind of a question? So, uh, you, you, it was a very important feature. You could like stare street passing behind the bridge. Oh, yeah. This is important more to be done with this specific. Like in the text or in the text. Like uh it's kind of uh your inclusion of the plan. Like we've been looking at this project uh a lot for a long time. And um uh, the question, you know. One of the questions I have, one of the key questions we have for this course is what is the relationship between the architecture and the, uh, and the surrounding community? And there's this hint of a stair street here. But what happens at this point? Does this block it? That would be rude. Like that would be uh, a disappointing thing. This has a stair coming up here. Do you go up the stair and then turn right and go up that? We don't know. We can't tell from this. And we look, we try, we look in here and say, oh, I wish I could see more pixels in there. I wish, I, I'm going to go there. I'm so going there. And I'm going to walk and I'm going to figure out. It's where I thought we left it. But then you threw this in, and it's like, 
pow. Stair Street is part of this architecture. Boom. I don't have to go to Caracas. It's right there. Wow. So uh, you and your classmates had built up this tension for me. Like, I need to know, I need to know, I need to know. Boom. My mind is blown. There it is. Feels important. Right? Yeah. That's good. That's good intel. So it changes the way I feel about this whole architectural intervention because this is all about how the insertion of a piece of architecture can have an impact for evil or for good of a whole community. And I'm like, is it mixed? I'm sure I'll give you a basketball court, but you have to give up your stair street, or you have to come through my building. No, nope, it's for good. They respect the stair street. Ah, oh, I feel so much better about this project because of the information revealed in the time. So I'm just saying that's cool. It feels important. Did you lose a point? I doubt it. On damage. No, just did some often uh, like some of you have gotten someone got fourteen out of fourteen a few like two weeks ago, and did I say good, perfect, next? No, that would be mean. I wanted uh, I there, there was nothing wrong enough to take away points in that project, but I don't want you to give up and go home. I don't want you to retire. I want you to make it better. Is there room to make this better? Yeah. Is there room? She got 14 out of 14 points. Is there room for her to do better? Yeah. I'm going to offer that suggestion. Doesn't mean you lost points. I suspect you lost no points. I just want you to bring this to the attention of the world when you discover things like this. Okay. Other questions about the analysis? And by the way, you guys are doing better than any previous group. I, I really like this new way of doing the analysis assignment, where you just do a piece and then we add a piece as we go. You guys ready for the video? No. You're scared of me. Mm -hmm. I know that we need to stop talking about the sketch assignment, but I just want to follow up. No, we're yeah. going to go back to the sketch. Okay. We did this first, and then we're going to go to sketch. Okay, then I'll save it. Um, and at the end of this class, one of the target things for this class is uh, you're going to go into this over at some point, I hope, uh, because this is what I'm paying for. You're going to get into the American dream overseas. and you're going to give me a sense of what kind of image I should be looking for and what I should be doing with it, right? And you're going to be doing that between now and Saturday, right? So it'd be useful to look at, to check in what's going on with this. Uh, with the analysis assignment. Are you adding anything for us to do this week? Yes, I am. That's still the sketch. I'm still looking at sketch. The caption, referring to page three of the analysis assignment, provide all eight elements of the caption. The citation in the footnote and the image source in the caption must comply with proper Chicago Manual of Style note citation format. Right, we covered that. There's no mention of bibliography format. Do not use bibliography format for any aspect of the analysis assignment. It's note citation all the time in the analysis assignment. So, 
what's this eight elements of the caption? That sounds complicated. Like how much more complicated can this assignment get is a reasonable question to ask. So what are these eight elements uh, to which you refer? Here are the eight elements to which we refer. We're already doing number one, concisely capture the claim, the main idea supported by the visual evidence. Intimate residential districts organized around a monumental courtyard. There's a period there. So that's okay. And so we already do that one, right? You're already doing it. If you don't do that, you're losing the point. Your friends don't do that. You're already doing this one. Cite the source or sources of your analysis image. I should say image. Using note citation format. We're already doing that, right? So those two things, the blue part and the pink part, are good. Yes. This might be a stupid question, so I just want to clear. Is uh, the claim is uh, separated. Se yeah, okay. it's different. It's um, you know you you work hard to capture the main point in a sentence as a claim, and then you work even harder to capture that point in a fragment of a sentence that is the key point. So this is not a real sentence. That's not a sentence, right? It's a fragment of a sentence. And so it's a word cluster that captures the key point. So it's the uh, title that we were putting in the long slides right now. Yeah, it, it, it's that, that it's the it, it's it's the it's really the same purpose, it performs the same purpose as that chunk of text in the bottom of the slide. So it's capturing the idea as compactly, succinctly, as concisely as possible. Okay. And then we have these other things. Two through seven is characterize the view. This is an aerial view of what? So that's item. So item one we got. Item two, characterize the view. Often. It's going to, in this case, it's going to be an aerial view. Uh, and it's, it's kind of like a sentence. So aerial view of the, give us a year. Uh, this is a great example because you have to choose a year that you think is the key year. This is the year uh, when it was converted from uh, from a mosque into a cathedral. So that's the key pivot. The cathedral part is added to the mosque. So give us a year, most important, most important year. Identify the work shown, the great mosque slash cathedral. Situate the work in a recognizable placement, Cordoba. We know generally Cordoba is in Spain. So you can say New York, but if it's um, Montpellier, you, if you write Montpellier, people might think, oh, Montpellier, Vermont? No, Montpellier, France. So sometimes you have to add the country, but not always. And we're already doing that, this, a lot of this work in the slides. So this should all be connected. So place name. Claim the rights to your analysis drawing. You are the author of this analysis image, even though you're building your analysis on top of someone else's image. You are claiming the intellectual. Your this is your intellectual property, and you're claiming it. And I'm thinking that we should add. Uh, we should acknowledge the rights, the intellectual property rights that the school has. So I'll, I'll change this. So it, like in the slides, we're already doing it. We put a slash city 22, just to locate it 
as something that happened in this court. Yes. Six. Six. Uh, that's the place name. Oh, six. Tribute the work. Tribute the create. Oh, you're right. Thank you. Um, if it's known. Okay. So that would go after Cordova. Yeah, you would say by uh, you know Lorenzo Pienza for uh, the cardinal of. So we don't know. It's it's not known. So uh, in in any case where we don't know, we just leave it out. And so if you're looking at um, an informal settlement, for example, there's no creator, there's no client, there's no year. There's no significant moment uh, that you can give for a year. Okay. CCDY, that's something we'll talk about at a certain point. So for number one at the end of the sentence, is it a period or is it a I've, you know, it's really the preference of the publisher. I look at some publications in our, in our field and I see periods and other times I see commas. Uh, and so uh, what do you think it should be? I mean, it's really, it's, I'm trying to, it says period, so let's go with period. But I'm constantly, uh, trying to stay on top of what publishers ask of us. Yeah, in both of these books, it's a period. And you will never find a book that actually complies with all of these. This is basically the result of my struggle with uh, architectural publication to try to figure out what I would do if I was a publisher. What do I respect when a publisher demands these things from me? It's also, I happen to be, it's a long story, but I happen to be working with the main consultant for the Library of the Congress on how to uh, identify images. And so this is, this is a result of some of the work I've done with this consultant for the Library of Congress. So I know way more than I should, and I apologize. But it is going to put you in a strong position to act with authority in the profession. So these are the eight things. And it's just the big one. Someone is going to want to do a video and maybe. Uh, on Monday, we'll just do an example. How do you make a video? Because you have to go into a studio, you have to hire a crew, you have to get the, the software, you have to have a whole mixing board, right? It's hard to make a video, right? Or is it? Let's find out next. Stay tuned. Okay. So that's, that's, the analysis. I can't believe how much time this is taking. <clears throat> so we have we have the work in bibliography and the citation format. We have the takeaway as given by uh, the editors, the uh, target questions is given by the editors, then Taylor and Adriana. Um, uh, they didn't have to do target questions for their section. We're kind of downgrading that. Um, so in the introduction to this first thing, we don't, we don't need to go through this with a fine tooth comb. Why don't you ask your questions? I have a question along the lines of what you said didn't have to be included within their body of text. Mm -hmm. Since we are submitting individual takeaway statements, is that not to be included in this? 
schedule writing anymore. I didn't include it because there was no talk about including. Correct. Okay. Correct. Your takeaways are local takeaways. Okay. So you and your partner, uh, we would all appreciate it if you and your partner were to um, offer a takeaway for whatever section um, heading you were responsible for. So it doesn't apply in every case. For example, it would be really cool if um, in place of uh, the target questions, we got um, a takeaway for, for the introduction. And then the next, when we get to the next uh, significant heading, instead of target questions, we get a takeaway. So then the takeaway we do here, for all like four pages, then the takeaway would be the next is going to be Exactly. Perfect. Other questions? So Mel and Nick did it. So Mel and Nick offered uh, a takeaway uh, for this section. Simulacra. What? Wait. What's a simulacra? It's highlight. It's uh, it's bolded because it's a key term. And. Uh, and the definition of the simulacra, that's a useful idea. Like that's something you can pull out in a meeting 10 years from now and say, uh, I think we should avoid creating a thin simulacra of what the local identity once was. Like you could say that and everybody in the room goes, whoa, 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 wait, what? What did she just say, right? And you'll say simulacra. It's uh, a reproduction of a past that didn't ever actually necessarily exist. Right? So it's kind of a fantastical theme park like uh, reproduction of something in the past. So that's a valuable insight. Mal and Nick have uh, given us a highlighting of that uh, so that our future selves can come back and find it. Because it's a powerful term. It's not just impressive. This is not just showing off. It's actually a useful concept. So uh, another useful concept are the uh, three modes of uh, Henri Lefebvre's uh, three modes of experience. which I suspect will be in here. So are there questions about this? Um, that's debatable. It doesn't seem right to footnote. This is just notes for yourself. Um, in all the page locations that we give um, at the end of these paraphrases are so that it can be footnoted in the work you do. This is an unexpected thing. We didn't expect it. So you put in the schedule. These are notes, so you can take a proper footnote. 
You don't have to keep the book in the library and look up what the page was set on. No. Page location is here. This is a huge block of text. It's a surprise. It's more useful if these are several different ideas to break them up into separate chunks, maybe one sentence at a time with the page location for each one. Uh, and then um, it's almost as if nothing in this section of the book is really that important not to consider for the takeaway because there's no highlighting in it. There's a few key terms. Market has, land market has been severely changed. Lack of regulation of the state subsidized home ownership loan department exists. It's not so much key terms, like maybe that was something that should best be highlighted as a key idea. Yeah, that's left over from the hypothesis limitations, I think. And underlining um, is usually not something we expect. So questions about this? This is looking pretty good, right? It's awfully long, but that's, um, you know, that's one of the hazards of uh, doing it as a, a school assignment is that we're used to uh, trying to get a better grade by writing more. And we're doing the opposite of that. The more you can compress it, the more impressive it is and the more useful it is. Yes. So I'm assuming you don't want us to box it like they did because I feel like it's simply to the entire passage as this is uh, I'm open to suggestion. I think they're treating it as, I mean, this is a very dysfunctional way to do a book but they put it in a box. I think it helps us navigate the piece to keep it in a box. It's my sense. Oh, no, we're trying to actually uh, soften the separation of the groups, because often, just out of fairness, the three page chunk of text doesn't neatly match the structure of ideas. And so we're trying to, we're trying to see the continuity of the structure of ideas uh, through the artificial construct of the different groups, the three page segments. But this box is part of box that was set up. Um, so that's what that box is. I put that box there. I'm going to outline some chapters. But I'm, would it, you know, when you guys in the future, when you are in a meeting and you're trying to develop your response, to let's see, let's publish. And you're trying to develop your response. And you're saying, what was, God, I wish I had access to those sketch writing notes that we did back in that class that time. Well, here they are in a website. You could do a search. When you do a search for the on the internet for simulacra, and the word simulacra and theme park. This is going to be one of your hits. And it's going to be work you did way back in 2022. You're going to find the definition of simulacra and you're going to have it to offer in your team. And it's going to help you solve the problems. That's good, right? You like that? That's, this is what we're trying to do set you up for this is the seven iron it's going to get you out of the rough and into the hole on on, on the 18th green 
You guys like that analogy? Yeah. Okay. Yes, that's it. I do have a question about a couple of ways to paraphrase the text we the reading. One of the suggested ways is list style. It's the style that you have in is very specific to the text that was taken from you. Another example. I have something like 30,000. Um, yeah, do I have a good example? Um, well, probably something more relevant would be uh, if we look at the um, the splintering urbanism segment, they use a lot of lists, right? They're listing projects. So here's a list. Is this working? There's a bullet point list. So these are the strategies. Uh, so it's kind of listing the strategies that have to do with cars. Is this working? Or could it be even more fully, more list-like? They also list developments overseas and their size. And the, your colleagues have decided it's not worth uh, including an excerpt of that list in the sketch writing. You may agree or, or disagree, um, but I generally think that's probably right. But um, here's some more listing that's going on. Well, these are target questions. No. Yeah. So these are questions taken from the content of the piece in this section of the chapter. It's a, it's a question for our ongoing work to see what we can figure out. So it's feeling like this is going okay. We don't have to invest more in the sketch rate. Um, so as part of the assignment, uh, you, you were all asked to uh, target questions coming out of the reading and going into the lecture. Now it's time for those target questions. Which of your target questions that you created as part of your Right space submission uh, are worth mentioning before we head into the lecture, which I swear we're going to do at some point. Um, I'm buying up right now. But I was wondering since they were in the reading, they were talking a lot about um, our urban environments. Being a free bundle people, like pockets of like kind of these exclusive pockets where it separates poorer areas out. Um, so I was kind of wondering how we can like combat that actually keep a city as like a, a whole piece rather than a bunch of little pieces coming together. Yeah. Wow. Good question. I don't have much room, so I'm being sloppy about the word. How to fight? I would, you know, if if I had more space, I would use a more appropriate professional word, which is how to offer alternatives, attractive alternatives to what feels like a pretty desperate move, rebundled pockets of exclusion. If we were in uh, a collapsing society, you know, Venezuela. We were in Venezuela and we were uh, architects. Uh, the people hiring us would have bodyguards and arm, you know, you know, bulletproof glass in their cars 
and they'd be hiring us to rebundle pockets of exclusion, right? And it's really difficult to offer them an attractive alternative to uh, hardened fortress-like enclaves to protect them from roving gangs. But here in the United States, in Boston, you should be able to do this, right? We have a tradition of public space that is uh, being contested. Like it could go either way at this point. We could create more and more exclusive, hardened, fortress-like boundaries for the ultra-wealthy to protect them from the growing climate justice rebellion. Or we can offer the greatest benefits to the greatest people, like they did in Medellin, and they ended the motivation for violence, right? Give us your AK-47 and we'll give you an education. A lot of people took that deal and the crime rate dropped by 92%. Pretty good day for an architect, right? When you can do that. So that's the question. Do we, do we even need another target question? Well, maybe we do. Mega projects. Mega projects. What's the question part of mega projects? Um, how can the intention of mega projects as an institution be tested for integration? Or, in fact, well, are they more stupid alongside of that? Because the list that they gave was not very explanatory. Can we? test the pros and cons prior to you know improve the performance of mega projects. Yes. It just seems in our section there's a heightened focus of all the problems and all the cons and the next portion we get the solutions. Yeah, were you reading ahead in chapter seven? Reading ahead in the old bundle that's mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure if um, our good friends offer solutions, but maybe they do. They do. <clears throat> and um, in a way, the infrastructure project. Um, that was partially passed by the US Congress is the answer. I mean, it, that the intentions of that infrastructure transformation that is going to help everyone pay off their student loans because architects are going to be employed in the coming decades because of this huge government spending thing. This is going to be the work of your generation of architects paying off your student loans by uh, making good on the promise of this infrastructure development package to reverse the enclave, the privatization of infrastructure provision. Right? So that's, that's very optimistic. In a way, we're doing it in part because these guys wrote this book. Well, that's why we have an infrastructure. It's part of the reason I'd like to think we have an infrastructure spending bill, and we have careers for you guys when you graduate. Pretty cool, right? Other target questions? Okay, should we get into it? The five version of this lecture. Okay. So keeping in mind that this class is being taught backwards, it's a little difficult because I don't know if you've noticed, we're dealing with a lot of concepts at the beginning of the semester that are unfamiliar, like financialization. 
Like I, I didn't learn that in history theory. I didn't learn that in uh, material matters or studio three, right? These are unfamiliar things. The reason we learn about financial markets and their influence on architecture at the beginning of the semester is because it matters for your careers. Uh, and then as we go back in history, we are interrogating the record of uh, cities and architecture to figure out how we got to where we got to, how we got in this situation so that we can uh, figure out, so identify some possibilities that otherwise would be difficult for people to uh, identify. Where is this? Do you recognize this picture? It's a pretty wild photo, isn't it? Um, here's, again, this landscape is ostensibly the work of one of your faculty. His firm designed this one an international competition to design this uh, landscape. Mark Clockford. He's a little bitter about it because they said, you win, and then they built this, but they didn't really involve his firm. This is what often happens in, who wants to guess? The right side of the It looks like Canada, right? Yeah. No, no more guesses? England? Yeah. England, Canada? Taiwan. Right? European. Looks, looks European. This looks European too. I think there's one of those in Berlin, isn't there? I think there is. I saw it in the Bourne movie. Mm -hmm. Qatar? One of the buildings in the middle of it. Uh, Shanghai. These are good guesses. Shanghai. So Shanghai is one of the stars of today's show. Um, uh, first, we're going to dig into the Jakarta stuff, but you already you know, invested a lot in the Jakarta stuff. So we're going to save some time and go through that quickly and try to just pull out the key nuggets uh, that are useful. Um, Jakarta grew very quickly. This is an interesting thing that the reading doesn't go into. Um, that, and I mentioned this uh, maybe to you, maybe to the other group, that in the 1970s, the Dutch colonial government said, hey, you guys need some planning support. We feel bad about our 350 years of colonial oppression and uh, resource extraction. So we're going to send a team of instructors to help you with your planning process. And they turned it from a classroom into an actual, let's make a plan. And so um, kind of like what I'm doing in this class. Um, this is not studying the history of cities. This is planning for the actions that we're going to take in the coming century. And so in chapter one, they said, well, you could do, uh, you could build a lot of new towns along the British Mall on the outside of the historic core, or, but that, that presents, that requires us to build lots of infrastructure, especially roads. So we're not going to do that. Friends don't have friends build satellite cities uh, outside of the main city. That's just crazy uh, in terms of so many roads automobile dependence. It, that's the most expensive. And just like Japan decided after World War II, that would cripple our economies and really limit our ability to grow economically. So let's do something that's more logical, more efficient. Let's do fingers of development. That way we can concentrate um, our infrastructure investments along these fingers. Or since that's, if that's a smarter move than this, Let's make it even smarter still. Let's just do uh, three fingers, two fingers running east-west and one finger going south. Then we can really uh, 
get the great the biggest bang for our infrastructure investment buck. We don't have zoning controls that we can depend on in Indonesia. So by depriving these uh, sensitive water catchment areas of infrastructure, it will limit the amount of development that can happen. So it's a pretty smart strategy. And so that was the strategy in 1970. They said, here, let's go. And uh, since this is these are the ecologically sensitive areas. This is what we should do. Um, we should preserve these ecological coastal zones, preserve these ecological water catchment hill, hillsides, because there's a lot of flooding. One of Jakarta's biggest problems is flooding from rivers and uh, flooding from uh, the sea. It's, so does that make sense? So right away, in the mid 70s, they did the exact opposite. They built a series of satellite towns and then planned a bunch of ring roads, which is an enormous amount of infrastructure, very inefficient, guaranteed to generate traffic congestion, automobile dependency. And that's exactly what happened. Why would they do such a thing? The answer is financialization that the cronies, the crony capitalist model of the Suharto dictatorship uh, was to let your friends get filthy rich by uh, producing a land market. The value of the agricultural land, let's say it's a dollar an acre. Uh, these banks wanted to diversify their holdings and so they said, we're going to develop a new town. And these yellows are new towns, satellite towns. They're really just subdivisions, what we really call a subdivision, because it's mainly just single family houses. And they learned this by looking at the United States as the region goes into. It. And they said, we can make a lot of money by pretending that we're going to build a lot of housing and we don't ever have to build it. We can just take loans. Uh, out of the bank, our own banks, uh, pretending we're going to build it. And then mostly we never build it. And all that money we can buy real estate in Boston and send our children to BU. So this is <clears throat> just some of the pictures that didn't fit in the, you know, you just get to see the, the way architectural history of students of architecture who basically take the same courses you all take. And uh, what they learned from their architectural history, uh, Mount Rushmore, Arc de, Tri Arc de Triomphe, uh, what's this? Remember it? From History 31, Brunelleschi, uh, the Cathedral of Florence, the largest dome of course. And for some reason, the Roman Colosseum and uh, the Greek Acrop Acropolis is juxtaposed together here for the uh, marketing office of this real estate development. And why not uh, the Issei Shrine? Um, and so basically, it's a collage, it's a Photoshop collage of marketing materials that becomes a Photoshop collage of architecture. Uh, to produce, uh, you know, to sell as investment properties. This is a place that I rode my bike out to uh, the edge of the city and just to see who I could talk to. And I saw someone hanging out. And it turns out there was a gardener of this house. And uh, there was always someone sleeping overnight in each of these houses. Um, just to protect them from burglaries. But basically, these houses were built, these houses were purchased, these houses are being maintained by three or four people per house. One person sleeps in each house each night. And uh, when, uh, when a couple has a baby and they can afford it, they purchase a house so that when that baby becomes uh, an adult and is ready to get married, they can sell the house. <clears throat> and with the money 
uh, that they earn from selling the house, they can set up their child in business, pay for the wedding, buy them a place to live. But no one lives in any of these houses. So entire neighborhoods are constructed without anyone ever living in it. And these are subsidized, government subsidized developments uh, designed to increase housing uh, availability to lower the cost of housing. Do we do that in the United States? So here's this bundling. So it used to be, uh, and we'll see this as we go back in history, but you already know this history of cities. A fishing village becomes uh, a port, becomes uh, a, a colonial city like Boston. And then the population grows and it becomes a center of manufacturing. And people build buildings and cities grow because we need to live in houses. We need factories, we need mill buildings, we need schools, we need churches. Architecture is produced out of the demand for the uses that are there in the buildings. And that creates a civic environment. We have the Boston Common, we have the streets of Boston. That's how we, we assume that that's how cities grow, but that is no longer the case. And this is uh, in the 20th century, we uh, interrupted that kind of organic natural growth of cities by imposing zoning. This is a crucial concept that you'll be dealing with the rest of your careers. That this is zoning important? Yes, it is. When you have smokestacks uh, spewing, pollution into the air and pipes uh, spewing pollution into the waterways. It's important not to have your houses right there, right? So we need zoning to separate these uses, these polluting uh, industrial uses. We need to keep those in one part of town and then we need a buffer zone and then we need uh, residential areas away from that uh, so that people don't die. This is again that fundamental planning principle don't shit where you eat. Sorry to be technical, but that's the fundamental rule number one. And then, but we kept going. Not only did we segregate the industry from the housing. We further segregated uh, commercial buildings away from housing and schools away from commercial buildings, et cetera. So zoning took on this other life of its own. And we have single use zones that contributed to uh, one of the core topics of the course in your education, the influence of the automobile on how we live. And so zoning and the use of the automobile has changed everything. And we're going to look at that. So zoning, this is a representation of that zoning segregation uh, of uses. Uh, so that's the first artificial splitting up of everything. And this is a second one where we take these, uh, these are the luxury enclaves separated from the uh, mass majority of people who live in the city who can't afford, who are excluded economically. And so this is what it looks like on the ground. So this is an excerpt in Jakarta of one of the edges. This is the area that used to look like this, but uh, it was cleared out so that uh, condominium towers, office buildings, a freeway, uh, and the office towers uh, of different businesses. And then here's another fragment of what, what used to be everything. And here's an irrigation, here's a flood canal to control flooding. Uh, and so we get 
And then what's really interesting for us is the architectural uh, lization, the architecture of that boundary. Um, if I wanted to go catch the bus, can I walk here and go there? What do you think? No, cannot. So this is the architecture that turns out to matter most. And we know this from our analysis projects. We don't just look at the architecture anymore in the, our analyses. We look at the connection, the relationship between the intervention and the surrounding context. And if it's like this, it changes everything. And so, the city used to be all this all the time, and slowly but surely, uh, as um, Marvin and Graham described pretty uh, vividly, that this used to be everything, and every once in a while there'd be an island of this. But increasingly, what's left over are islands of, of uh, neighborhoods uh, of traditional housing. And here's the, um, the reality that shocked me was that I made up this crazy chapter title, Orange County Java. And then uh, within 15 years of writing that piece, they, I, I don't think they read it, but here it is. This is Orange County Java. This is the development called Orange County. So um, any questions about the whole Jakarta thing? Okay, good, because we don't have time. But it, it kind of deals, you know, we're kind of looking at the bun rebundled pockets of exclusion. Um, now, to the extent that we see this kind of powerful transformation of the entire region around the capital of Indonesia. Uh, as a money-making scheme, we take land that has almost no value, we create a market for it, and we capture the difference between, we bought it for $1 an acre, and now we're telling a story that it's gonna be something really, really cool, and now it's a thousand dollars an acre. And whether we build this or not, we can sell it for much more than we bought it for and generate this enormous amount of money. Indonesia did that. You created a property bubble. When that bubble burst, there was uh, a rebellion. The president was uh, ousted from office. And uh, there's a whole new government system in Indonesia because of that collapse of the economy. That looks like child's play compared with China. Uh, China has a chip on its shoulder because uh, China was never formally colonized. But during the colonial era, uh, the British had a problem. British famously really like tea. Tea comes from China. How do they buy the tea of China back before we had electronic currency, etc.? Britain could not buy the tea in China unless and until it had something to sell the Chinese. It had nothing. The Chinese were famously uninterested in anything the British had to offer. Uh, and so the British did what any of us would do, uh, grow opium in India and get its population addicted to opium. I mean, what else can we do? That's just rational behavior, right? So that's what they did. Notice that this is not the circular trade thing. There is no input from Great Britain that goes to India. It's simply the only input is guns, soldiers and warships. So Britain invests in the military domination of India, forces 
uh, the Indian population, especially in these three locations, to grow opium. And uh, then uh, sells that, brings that opium illegally into China, especially Canton, uh, currently Guangzhou. <clears throat> sells that opium <clears throat> to an increasingly addicted population in China, and using that income, now they're able to get tea to, for tea time. Simple, beautiful, elegant system, right? Everything's fine. Until uh, the Chinese government said, hey, 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 that's illegal. You can't keep bringing opium into, it's destroying their fabric of society. And so the Chinese were bold enough to confiscate the opium in one of the ships. The British said, uh, you give us no choice. We have to destroy you. And so they send the Navy to uh, Canton and the opium wars of 1840, 1841, second opium war, about 20 years later, basically British domination of the ports allows them to establish the port of Shanghai. Shanghai is uh, no longer, I mean, this is the traditional Chinese city on the Huangpo River, a lot of fishing activity, but the European powers get together and they divide up Shanghai into different national enclaves. And uh, a big one is the US, uh, regardless of, of uh, which uh, colonial power is controlling each part of, of Shanghai, this is the waterfront where it became a new shipping center for goods coming in and out of China and it becomes dominated. This waterfront that we were looking at, that building, this skyscraper that made it look like London or Canada, um, is an American building. It's American architects, American construction firms, American steel being brought in, basically replicating uh, Manhattan uh, in Shanghai. So this, these are all American buildings. And there's a comparison between uh, Manhattan and Shanghai. So those are those buildings. That's really low resolution. I should update that stuff. So there's a humiliation of China historically. If you want to understand why China is so, it's so important for China to be a superpower, it's to correct the historic humiliation by the West, because China was the greatest country in human history for most of human history. And then there was a brief moment of humiliation by the British and other Western powers, and now it's back. And it's really important for them to dominate the hell out of everybody who had formally uh, dismissed them. And so how do you do that? Well, in the 1980s, uh, after Mao Zedong uh, passes and Deng Xiaoping becomes premier of China, um, if you want to place your country on the global stage and say, yes, London, Tokyo, and New York are the global cities of the world, but not for long, here comes China, who are you going to call? You call the architects. So you have an international competition uh, this is Shanghai. This is where the Mark Klopfer waterfront is. All the American skyscrapers are here. And this is a bunch of rice fields on the other side of the Huangpo River, ready to be developed as a global city. So you call the architects, you have a competition. You say, and architects do what architects do. And we often have to do this in studio. You take something that uh, does what you want to do, and you just say, let's try that. Let's try Manhattan. Let's see if that works. So they try Manhattan. Let's try Venice. Oh, time's up. Paris. And so then they, they really put in the framework of the cities just overlaid it. As a starting point, 
And then they look at all the competition entries and a Chinese firm, just similar to what they did to Mark Klopfer's proposal, they take it from there and they implement it. And they put many of the tallest buildings in the world here, you can see from the shadows, and that becomes the global city of Shanghai. Which brings the example? It was kind of a, as is often the case, it's kind of a hybrid. Uh, this is the Champs Elysees. A one meter wider because you gotta do the French, why not? Um, and then the skyscrapers of Manhattan, um, etc. Replication of the radio tower in Berlin, and so on. It's kind of what Singapore did so well. They look at the rest of the world, they copy, but they do it better, they do it bigger and better. So the rest of the lecture is gonna be online. I was looking a little ahead. You know, it said uh, development and proposal. Is it done? This is done. Oh, okay. Yeah, it doesn't look like this anymore. Yeah. Well, an empty city. It's, there's a whole ghost city thing. This was, you know, it took a while for Pudong to be occupied, and it was only occupied because um, they. Um, they coerced companies. They said, we'll give you access to our markets. Apple computer, we'll give you access to our markets. Uh, if you lease uh, so many thousand square meters of office space in Shanghai. So they lease the office space, but they never use it. It's all empty. It's just, a, it's just an empty. And so this is all in fact, this is what happens uh, as a result of investment. Uh, this is exchange value. All of this architecture is built and never occupied. And, and in some cases, I just found, uh, it's, I don't know why it's not in here. Oh, yeah, was there a giant demo? Ghost cities in China have it all, oh. such as lakes, yeah. parks, city so squares, street lights, and sprawling road networks. Yeah. But it is missing one crucial element, the people. No Some people. ghost cities were demolished. The second phase of yeah. Liyan yeah. New City had been suspended for seven what? years. It was demolished by blasting on August 27, 2021, and 15 unfinished buildings yeah. were blown up within 45 seconds. Taiwan News said that the value of these structures is around 1 billion yuan, or $154 million. The housing project began in 2011, and it saw frequent interruptions, even after ownership changed. Finally, it was destroyed. However, this isn't the first time China has seen simultaneous demolitions of this size. On August 4th, 2017, 36 high-rise buildings in Chenzhai were demolished by centralized blasting consuming 2.5 tons of explosives. This was also the most extensive blasting in the history of Zhengzhou. There are two government motives for creating ghost cities in China. First, Chinese local governments used real estate developments to boost the local economy. According to a research by Open Edition Journals published in 2017, the residential real estate sector has replaced the manufacturing industry, becoming the driving force of the local economies. Harvard professor of public policy and economics, Kenneth Rogoff, and IMF economist Yuan Chen Yang published research in 2020. The report estimated that the real estate sector accounts for about 29% of China's gross domestic product. Therefore, residential and commercial land expands quicker than housing demand. According to Nikkei Asia, many wealthy people own numerous homes in cities, and the apparent rate of homeownership is over 90%. It was higher than in the most developed countries, and the vacancy rate is higher than so far. You go into the shop, which is not really a shop, yeah. and the photographer sets up their equipment, and they go into the shop, which is not really a shop, yeah. and the photographer gets the makeup and the gown, and, and there's like a dozen teams doing this on a new given weekend. They're getting their wedding photographs taken in this town where nobody lives, but it's completely owned because it's an investment property. And it's a valuable investment because it looks like one. 
scary. How'd you like to live in the neighborhood? That's I feel like I'm in a theme park. Well, look around you. Because I suspect we all live in a neighborhood where the first signs of this are happening. Right down the street from me, the most expensive, I think it's probably the most expensive piece of real estate in the city. They bought it for three million. Uh, they moved the house for a million. They built what's called an iceberg house, where you, you see the tip of the iceberg, but most of it's on the ground. So parking, tennis court, what's moving through there, all this underground. And then they moved that house back on it. And it's a entrance for two sets. Really well done, wow. architecturally. Yeah. But no one lives there. <laughs> well, uh, people are hired to make it look occupied. Yeah. But the owners don't live there. The owners never visit, I suspect. Someone puts out Halloween decorations at Halloween time. Someone puts out Christmas decorations at Christmas time. Crews take care of the landscaping. And it looks like it's lived in. But the owner doesn't live there. They're parking. Uh, they're trying to pay as much money as they can pay to artificially boost the selling price, the potential selling price. So they're not trying to save money. They're actually trying to make it more expensive. And that makes everybody's property more expensive. So they're using it as a resale value. Yes, that's all it is. So the more they pay for a property, the better. Even if they're inflating all the prices in there. Right. And they're not living in it. It's kind of like this in my neighborhood. It's kind of like this. Yeah. The architecture doesn't look too different from this. Yeah. They changed it to make it look fancy. Yeah. And, and it's just there. And no one's benefiting from it right now. So we'd be looking kind of for these like holes per se in uh, urban escapes and how they kind of have yeah. islands of nothingness. The rebundled pockets of exclusion. Yeah. Okay. And the expeditions yeah. of those rebundled pockets of exclusion. Right. Do the kids go to the public school or are they get taken <laughs> by a chauffeur to the private school? You know, that, and the most vivid examples are right now in China, <laughs> but they are everywhere, including all around us. This is probably China is probably the best place to look for. But then be aware that uh, I don't see any of this It's something else. But if I look over towards Brooklyn, I bet I, I, I would see some. No. But that's too subtle to really. Uh, it's on the same it. scales, China. We're so looking for like examples like in China. Yeah, okay. especially as an architect. Wow, this is good design. Right. So interesting. Wait a minute. What's going? What's up with this? What's going on here? It's not actually designed for the community. Right. Yeah. It's actually deliberately designed to prevent the community from interacting. With yeah. Have yeah. Any uh, yeah. And in talking about the differences between the architectural intention and the reality, are we allowed to add in like this is a photographer destination now? Like people are. Find their way through the boundaries, and that yeah, that works because my investment value is being maintained. Right. Do you have to look at an area that is being maintained, or can it be nearly abandoned? Well, once you choose the site, you learn whatever you can from it. So you you know be careful not to force the evidence to tell the story or that story. Okay. Choose something that seems to offer. Like, Just start with the problem. Yeah. See, start with an image. You know, choose it. Commit to an image that seems to have something to tell us. Because what's on? What's up with that? And then you are obligated to follow where the evidence leads, even okay. if it contradicts what you originally wanted to say. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. This is gonna be my favorite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank it you. Might, it might. It might. Encounter something you like even more. Probably. Yeah. Could happen. Okay, well, thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Well,
So I'm actually from there. You are. I was born there, and I'm really? going in August. Okay. If you want, like I don't know, any pictures, pictures. analysis. Yes, I do. I do. Okay. Let me know. Okay. I think for the term project, we're going to circle back to Latin America because you know we did this design for life thing we did this campus the same thing but back in the semester you didn't really teach us how to do analysis right then so it wasn't really that good well at the end of the semester when you guys are the world's foremost experts on how to do analysis let's circle back to the earlier topics of the semester Professor, uh, that out. I did the editor thing. Yeah. Well, what do I what do I to submit? Right space. Um, you submit uh, the same four things that everybody else submits, but you have the benefit of having already done the first thing. As an editor, you were already uh, your job was already to produce a takeaway for the entire reading. Yeah. And so you submit that. Just a takeaway. Just the takeaway, and then the other three things. The questions. What are the other three things? Yeah. Also for that, just need to the format that you must Oh, font. Except for Comic Sans. <laughs> Well, yeah, you will be judged on your yes. font choice. <laughs> you will be punished if you choose the wrong font. Yeah. That goes without saying. I mean, the design professionals, we're always, we're constantly judging each other's font choices. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's check in on Zoom. Is anyone with us on Zoom? Oh, I don't have to do that, right? It's a very clear. Am I the only participant on Zoom? Yeah. Oh, there it is. Oh yeah, it's just me. So do you guys have uh, the contact? Can you, uh, who's not here? Do you have her? She's gonna be on Zoom. She's gonna be on Zoom? Where is she? She's late. All right? Um, and Joe, who has Joe's phone number? Just make sure he's okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, 